Welcome to evening meditation, uh, the last uh, week before the start of Lent. <clears throat> and I've added another P to our list, so prophets, priests, poets and painters. See where they appear as we go. So we begin as usual by making ourselves comfortable, bringing our awareness and our attention to where we're sitting, connected with the chair or sofa, connected with the ground, hands resting on the lap or on the thighs, eyes lowered, gaze lowered or eyes closed or using the image on the screen as we take two slower deeper breaths and we bring our focus, our attention to the fact that we are breathing really notice this is an in-breath and this is an out-breath In through the nose and out through the mouth. Just in your own time, <clears throat> lengthening and deepening that breath. Conscious maybe of the rise of the belly with the in-breath. And the fall with the out-breath. Maybe holding between the in-breath and the out-breath consciously if you can. And tonight, rather than scanning the mind to see if there's any thoughts, maybe we might consciously do a little review. This is called examine of the last two or three days, perhaps. Anything from the last two or three days that, as you just cast your mind back, anything that stands out? A memory, a positive memory of a conversation. Something you experienced. Perhaps something you read. What brought joy in the last two or three days? Just reconnect with that recollection. With a sense of gratitude. But where also did you feel uncomfortable perhaps or, or even resistant to God and any promptings of the spirit?
Where have you struggled? We can share these also with the Divine Presence, with that deeper part of ourselves. Just continue to breathe as you focus on something specific from the last two or three days. Sharing with the Divine Presence. A rabbi from the last century, Rabbi Heschel, describes the shared experience of feeling between God and a prophet. The fundamental experience of the prophet is a fellowship with the feelings of God, a sympathy with the divine pathos, a communion with the divine consciousness. The typical prophetic state of mind, he says, is one of being taken up into the heart of the divine pathos. Yesterday, the lectionary readings included the account of the transfiguration, a vision of the soul, the heart, the mind. On the screen here is a depiction, a painting by <clears throat> Sega Kurda, who was a priest but also a painter. Three figures there in bathed in light. The figure of Jesus in the middle. Elijah and Moses. Almost forming a circle, a union. In Kurda's work, the disciples are below and are seeing this vision in, in prayer. Their eyes are closed. Perhaps that's actually closer to the account in Luke's Gospel where in the account of the Transfiguration he talks about the disciples being weary with sleep. Anyway, in the darkness of prayer, in their inmost selves, they see the divine. God dwells within each one of us. very much in line with the orthodox understanding <clears throat> which is that th of faith which is that through physical and material places and times and objects the light and presence of god can shine and humanity can meet with divinity church building a liturgy an icon 
enables it to become a vehicle of the spiritual. Writer Dorothy Lee, talking of the transfiguration, says it is the meeting place between human beings and God, between the temporal and the eternal, between past, present and future, between everyday human life and the mystery of God. In Kurda's work, it is not so much Christ who is transfigured as the disciples. The light of God shines continually upon and through Christ, but only fleetingly and seldom do the disciples see Jesus as he truly is. So perhaps not this is transfiguration I don't think is the same as transformation but it's revealing the reality of what we already are so using the image perhaps feel yourself through the colors through the imagery in the presence of Jesus, or perhaps more accurately, the risen and eternal Christ. Perhaps we might feel drawn to Christ, and in our meditation we feel Christ drawing near to us. And this perhaps reflects our own spiritual journey through our practice of meditation. Entering into the holy, the sacred, and opening oneself to the divine, which is already within. Here in the picture, the account, the disciples in their meditative prayer took a leap forward in their understanding. And perhaps as we gaze on this image, we can allow the silence of our gazing to become our prayer. Maybe at this point, bring attention back to your breath, conscious of your breathing, as we share a poem. This one, Richard Raw offers from uh, Rainer Rilke, translated from German. I believe in all that has never yet been spoken. I want to free what waits within me so that what no one has dared to wish for may for once spring clear without my contriving. If this is arrogant, 
God forgive me, but this is what I need to say. May what I do flow from me like a river. No forcing and no holding back, the way it is with children. Then in these swelling and ebbing currents, these deepening tides moving out, returning, I will sing you as no one ever has, streaming through widening channels into the open sea. I think those words also reflect that idea of <clears throat> sharing and of union. between humanity and the divine. Streaming through widening channels into the open sea. And so we move to our longer time of silence. And in that silence, perhaps reflect on anything we've spoken or seen or use the breath or practice observing your own thoughts and feelings allowing you to gently lay them down
So we come gently out of our silence. Gently opening our eyes if they've been closed. Stretching any parts of the body that have a bit stiff, flexing the fingers, wiggling toes. Returning to our presence in the room. As I look towards the coming week, which takes us into the season of Lent, I ask for the grace to embrace all that God wishes to say to me as the Spirit leads me deeper into all truth. And a closing prayer from Elizabeth of Chernow. O consuming fire, O spirit of love, descend into our hearts and there transform us until we are fire of your fire, love of your love, and Christ himself is formed within us. Amen.